Over here, you'll be learning how to make a good eater. Williamson Eater Synthesis. Now suppose we want to produce this eater called Tertiary Brutal Metal Eater. Structure looks like this. Recognize this skeleton structure here. 1, 2, 3, 4, Brutal Group Tertiary. And on the other side of this oxygen is a metal group. It ends with a carbon. Now there could be two approaches here. I've already drawn. In, a, in the blue approach, we are using a Tertiary Brutoxide the nucleophile to attack the methyl iodide, kick it out in an SN2 reaction to form this. At the other side, we are using a methoxide here, the nucleophile, to kick out the iodide from a tertiary butyl iodide. Which is better? Let's analyze. For this case, the lone pair of this nucleophile just attack this metal, remove the iodide, and this is the only product you can get. You get a single product. Whereas for the other side, we notice that now we have an alkoxide. Alkoxide, as we know that they are strong bases. Their strong bases means they have a tendency to pick up a proton from my substrate and undergo an elimination reaction. And as you can see here, we have a few protons that are good candidates to be picked up by this base here. So potentially, I could follow my orange color pen. And what you see is actually a E2 side reaction. And the product would be an alkene. Don't forget the iodide. So by this virtue, we know that if you are given a choice to make an ether, try to use a very bulky and steric alkoxide. Like this, the third butoxide is very good, very bulky and a less hindered alkyl halide. Because the Williamson ether synthesis is being controlled by the steric factor.